Hey, Boblin, could you hold this for me? Just real quick, I need you to hold that, and I, I'll just, I'll take it back at the end of the news, which, you know, has got to flow. Ooh, welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have a little bit of a controversial story to jump on into first. And this is going to be in regards to Patrick Rothfuss and his charity stream that took place a while ago and the lack of a follow through of a promise. Now there is some misinformation around this as well. So I want to go through as detailed as I can to give what I believe is the truest perspective possible from me. Full transparency though, I have reached out to Rothfuss and his team that the only way I really could on their website and have not received any response in about 48 hours. Hours, which I didn't fully expect to. That's not a knock against Rothfuss or his team. I just had to reach out to the website, which is the only way I really could. And I'm sure I just got lost in a pile of other fan mail. So that's not a knock in this case. But receiving over 18,000 up arrow things on Reddit, we saw a post in r slash book saying, in December, readers donated over $700,000 to Patrick Rothfuss' charity for him to read a chapter from Doors of Stone with the expectation of February at the latest. He has made no formal update in eight months. Now there were a Additional stretch goals set and met to promise an actual voice cast to read the chapter that also has not been followed through with. That being said, I want to clarify, in no way, shape, or form as it seems, Patrick Rothfuss has taken the bulk or all of the money and run, as I've seen some people say online. No, this money was raised for charity, and from everything we've seen, the money went to charity, aside from Rothfuss taking a cut for services rendered and benefiting in, I guess, the ways of getting spotlight attention for being a part of this project. I do want to clarify that because there is a huge difference between not following through on this promise, which sucks, and stealing from charity, which in no way, shape, or form is Rothfuss done. Now, there has been no official update, formal release justifying why it has taken so long to actually follow through on this promise to the readers, aside from apparently offhanded comments in Rothfuss's Twitch streams that I have had a hard time tracking down. So after some more digging, I was able to find a Twitch clip from five months ago where he said, as things are not moving as quickly as he wanted, and I eagerly went into the comments section to see what fans had to say, and okay. Though they seem to be, from what I've seen, comments around trouble with voice cast, things along those lines, which doesn't entirely make sense to me because, hey, you could still just release the chapter as is and then release the actual narrated voice cast thing later on. I'm sure fans would very much so appreciate that. But the big takeaway that I have seen from this is that this seems to have been the final straw for a lot of Rothfuss fans. If you look in comment sections, either on the original post or other posts on Twitter, etc., that I've started discussing, this, many people are just kind of sick of getting no update from Rothfuss, and even the top comment on the initial Reddit post was just saying, look, he's not an author anymore, he's a Twitch streamer. Sorry for the constant cut-ins, I just want to be careful how I cover this. There is also just a building frustration in how he is communicating about this topic, despite frequently being on Twitter. Rothfuss is not addressing this directly in a detailed formal response, which is why there's so much misinformation and it's hard to cover for me. And I have spent a lot of time I'm defending Rothfuss over the years in regards to mental health and writing, but this is a bit different to me. This isn't something where it's just, hey, look, I haven't finished the book due to mental health reasons. This was a promised chapter that was said to be deliverable by a deadline for a direct amount of money raised. That was a goal that was crushed. And so for me, even if the chapter wasn't fully written, if Rothfuss wasn't in the condition to get it done for release, he should have known that. And I want to just take this moment to personally apologize to anyone from my audience that did donate as a result of my encouragement here on the channel, I just made the mistake of believing that Rothfuss would follow through. If it was only a couple months late, I wouldn't have that big of an issue with it, but it was promised to be February at the latest, it is August. I have no personal hatred for Rothfuss, but this just really sucks in my opinion. And I get there are probably excuses on his end that he absolutely believes and could be somewhat justifiable. But this is something where people had an expectation, helped a cause, for a return and have not seen that return and it makes me feel guilty for having pointed my audience in that direction. But we are going to jump on off from that, I'm sure, not controversial piece of news at all. It may be 8.30 a.m., 30 minutes before fantasy news needs to drop, but we had big enough news from Sanderson hit that 
I need to go ahead and put it on in here. And there's no one who can say it better than the man himself. So the conversations with uh, with Mistborn have always been options and my option money got bigger and bigger uh, to the point that, you know, people are paying mid six figures just for the option um, and things like that. And it has changed now that everyone's coming and they're like, we already have the team. We are really excited by this. We'll just do a buyout. We are so confident we are going to make it that we are buying the rights right now. And our goal would be to be in production in six to eight months. Um, and that's what's happening to me now, uh, which these are not sure things. Nothing is a sure thing in Hollywood. Um, but um, I would be uh, surprised if we aren't on set um, doing things in uh this time next year uh i would be i would be shocked if we aren't obviously this is incredibly exciting but we need to keep in mind what he said about it not being an absolute certainty but it does look damn sure likely we will be getting something from miss born in production by the end of 2023 and i could not be more excited. Of all of Sanderson's stories, I find Mistborn to be the one most appropriate for a first adaptation, and I just, yes, 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 it feels like fantasy news has been building for this moment, and the fact that I have to do it last minute sucks! But that has just been your last minute fantasy news update. Back to the rest of the video. To a story important to the entire industry of literature. And that is that Stephen King has testified recently against the merger of publishing giants. Stephen King, with his 50 years of experience in publishing, went to Washington, D.C. and essentially just said that any more lack of competition in the publishing space will be bad. And the planned $2.2 billion merger between Simon & Schuster and Penguin Random House would be bad for everyone except for them. And this should be something, in my opinion, everyone's against. I mean, it doesn't matter if you fall in the political spectrum left or right. One of the things that makes capitalism work is competition. And the fact that we are seeing massive publishing houses try and consolidate together is not good for anyone except for them. On top of that, a lot of the different publishing houses people think are not actually related to the big original houses absolutely are. They are their parent companies, and there is still a massive amount of control in just a few hands for what gets published today. Absolutely, the indie scene has done a good amount of work to try and prevent these gatekeepers from being just the absolute authority in what gets published. That used to just be the case. It's not anymore, but that does not mean it's not crucially important for consumers, bookstores, and authors that this merger be stopped. There is already far too few hands controlling what gets put in bookstores, what has massive marketing campaigns behind it, and what is really put in front of most readers. I know in the circles we often talk in, it seems like tons of indie books are getting so much attention and love and hitting massive success, but they are still very, very far from any kind of or even artificial success that these publishing houses have the ability to create overnight. So I personally am happy to see Stephen King putting whatever weight he can behind this, and I hope to see this merger blocked. A lack of competition, especially in areas of literature, is just fundamentally bad in my opinion. This is not, this is not controversial at all what I'm saying. <laughs> and this video is brought to you by this limited edition version of A Mark of Kings being given away by Wraithmark Creative on their Twitter account. Three copies of this limited run, 1500 in existence, only leather bound, will be happening from now until Monday when the winner will be announced. Three copies will be given away and to get one, possibly, all you must do is go to their Twitter account, give Wraithmark a follow and the pinned tweet, a like and a retweet, and you'll be entered a chance to win. But even better than that, every new follower they get between now and August 11th they will be donating 10 cents to the Trevor Project, which is just a good cause. So if you would like to possibly have this gilded signed edition of A Mark of Kings on your shelf, check out the link in the description and you can be entered in chance to win. But okay, let's back on away from massive industry news or controversial author news and just talk about some fun book releases because Orbit has followed through. Yes, they are one of the smaller companies as a parent company that's one of the massive publishers, fun fact, but they have followed through with their promise to actually put out a full new set of Witcher hardbacks. And we have our first look at the art for Baptism of Fire and Tower of Swallows. So if you 
or one of the Witcher fans who likes to collect these books again and again and again and again and again because apparently that's what the market demands because oh my god we have gotten so many Witcher editions you can go ahead and check these on out in the description down below like subscribe ah uh, youtuber things and we have also excitedly seen the marketing campaign that is financed by a massive company kick off for shit <laughs> for Samantha Shannon's A Day of Fallen Night, taking place in the same world as Priory of the Orange Tree, which I absolutely need to get a review for done here on the channel. Now, I'm not entirely sure how to cover all the different clips from Lord of the Rings that have been sent to me, but essentially, yes, the upcoming Rings of Power show has had a bunch of different little featurettes that have two or three seconds of different footage than all the others, and some people have wanted me to react to all of these, and I'll say what I essentially said on Twitter. I very much so understand and appreciate that reaction content is fun, but I do not want to become a reaction channel, and if I reacted to all of these, you would get just a solid week of reaction videos. I'm just going to keep reaction videos to being a kind of rare and fun thing here on the channel for super special releases, but for now, yes, if you'd like to see all these different featurettes, I have one link down below, and they're on the Rings of Power Twitter. It kind of hurt to say that if I'm being completely honest because like if I just did reaction content that always does so well for me but I just really don't want to do reaction content so I have to like say goodbye to those higher view counts. <sighs> and for my arcane fans, in a very exciting, at least for me, who's like a super nerd piece of news, it looks like we're going to be getting a making of arcane documentary coming to Netflix. Actually, I'm not entirely sure if this is dropping on Netflix or the League of Legends YouTube channel. It just says it's coming August 4th, so check both? I'm not entirely sure. Let me, is it out now? Okay, it's August 4th right now and it's not on their YouTube channel. Is it on Netflix? Put that in the description of your video, League of Legends. What are you doing? It's not on Netflix either. What the hell? Okay, I watched the entire trailer again and it doesn't say what platform it's coming on. So frustratingly, I have to say by the time you're watching this, it's on either Netflix or YouTube. I'll update it with a thing here if it's released before I have to upload this video. And I'm happy to say for Chainsaw Man fans, we've had our first poster reveal for the upcoming anime, as well as the clarification specifically put within the article that you'll be getting a full trailer August 5th on YouTube. On YouTube. The platform is said. <laughs> So if you're a Chainsaw Man fan, keep your eyes open, peeled for that. In a rather upsetting last minute fantasy news insert, I have recently learned that Rakapa Sadai, a very valued and loved member to the Wheel of Time community, has recently suffered a very unfortunate physical accident that has left them in the hospital. I won't make this super long, but there's a GoFundMe, and if you can afford to throw even a couple bucks their way, I'm sure it would mean a lot link in the description down below. But this has just been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already and hit the Patreon if you like support what I do here. Wait, what time is it? The bomb! Ah!